Hi guys, welcome to day four. It's Thursday, and as you can see, I'm not in the garden. I'm not in the greenhouse. I thought we would come into the kitchen since we're gonna be talking about harvesting and preserving. Um, once we get started, I'm gonna wait a few minutes before I actually get started into everything. See who's gonna join me today. Start with some water. <laughs> So I hope you guys have had a great day. And of course, I certainly hope that you have gotten your plan all written out for your garden and you're getting ready, hopefully this weekend to get started. I know I have lots to do. Hi, welcome. Let me know when you join me with a comment or emoji. This is day four. This is gonna be our final um, class as far as I'm um, learning stuff. We're gonna do recap tomorrow um, and Q&A. Hopefully you guys will join me. If you're watching this on the replay, please make sure that you're asking your questions and leaving comments as you watch through. I always get back to you as soon as they pop up and let me know um, with a notification. So make sure you do that and I will be sure to get back to you. All right, so we'll just give it another minute and then we'll start into day four. I have lots of things going on in here. I brought out some of my canned goodies. I have stuff growing out of containers. <laughs> All kinds of things in here. So, and if you guys watch me on Twitch, you'll, you'll be familiar with this background already. <laughs> and if you're not familiar with it, well, maybe you should come join me on the weekend. I cook uh, my plant-based and vegan meals um, Saturdays and Sundays on Twitch in the afternoon. So you can join me there as well. Hi, welcome. How's your day going, you guys? I'm going to start in just a minute. I'm inside today in the kitchen. <laughs> a little bit of a different scenery. As you can see, like everything else outside homemade, it's homemade in here as well. <laughs> All right, well, we'll get started. I see some of you are joining me. So welcome to the kitchen. Welcome to day four. My name is Megan Lane. And if you haven't been with me all week or you don't know who I am, some strange noises in the house, creepy. <laughs> uh, like I said, my name is Megan Lane. I'm a nutrition coach and a sustainable lifestyle teacher. I live off the grid homestead. And this week we've been talking about how to grow food at home um, not just gardening, but actually getting food production going and started. And we talked a lot about different methods, different ways, including composting and all kinds of things. And now we're in the kitchen because at the end of the season, we're going to be harvesting all that food and we have to do something with it. So we're going to be talking about that in just a sec. <laughs> well... Who's getting the work, you or your son? <laughs> Hopefully you're just the bystander. <laughs> I'm glad you got out of the house today. <laughs> oh my goodness, but that's the dentist isn't fun. We know I'm I'm headed there soon. They've reopened the dentist as well and I still got that thing from two months ago, if you guys remember, those of you who, who've been with me for a while. All right, so uh, we've gone through all the stages of gardening this week, uh, how to get started, the dozens of different methods that you could use for different spaces and so forth. And we went through building a little structure together and composting. And I hopefully um, you guys have enough to get started with and have seeds growing and have a plan of action ready for your garden. Um, unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I'm sure you're already deep in and things are growing lovely for you. And I hope you get a really good production. And that's what we're talking about. Um, at the end of the season, when everything is heart, when everything is ready to harvest, everything is, the tomatoes are getting nice and red, you know, the zucchinis, you've been pulling them off for weeks, everything's full and abundant. Uh, we need to do something with this food. And um, we really need to think about how we're gonna be preserving it, especially um, if you guys have been planning, I hope you've been planning um, to grow a large amount, at least of a couple items. I mean, you don't have to grow the whole grocery store, 
Um, but, you know, if you can just grow a season's worth of tomatoes or a season's worth of um, potatoes, <laughs> tomatoes, potatoes, or carrots or, or corn or something like that, you don't have to grow everything. I mean, if you can, awesome. But, like, don't overthink and over worry. Just focus on a couple things and think about how you plan to preserve them. And before we get into the different ways of preserving your food and storing your food, I also want to include in this um, part of your harvest is, is actually storing your seeds. Seed saving is a really important part of harvesting and preserving because you need to preserve and save those seeds that you're growing for the next season, um, especially if you want to continue on with the same, hopefully you have heirloom seeds, seeds and you want to continue on with the same strain. Um, you just keep your seeds. You make sure you keep a couple vegetables or fruits or whatever it is and you save the seeds for next season. That way you're not having to buy seeds all the time. You're not having to worry about whether you can get the same kind of seeds um, and you're always stocked up ready for next season. So seed saving is part of harvesting and preserving your stock. So make sure that you include that at the end of the season as part of your collecting activity that you put a little bit away um, for next season. And there's lots of ways you can do that. Um, you know, if you're just cooking the food fresh, obviously, you can just save the seeds all kinds of ways. So preserving your food, preserving your harvest. Um, I don't know. Do you guys can? Do you guys have cold storages? Any way that you are already um, preserving your food? I'd be interested to know. As you can see, I brought out a whole bunch of my jars. I am a, I guess, avid canner. I can literally everything um when i used to have meat birds we used to can meat we would buy the meat on sale uh when we could get a good deal from the local market and we would can it up so i've literally canned everything <laughs> um of course i don't do meat anymore it's really tricky uh and it doesn't always turn out the way we hoped but there are some really some really good um good products that, that actually can really, really well. So if you guys want to experiment with canning meat, um, first off, you'll have to have one of these. You can see behind me, I think. Um, you'll have to have a pressure canner. This one just has the weighted gauge on it. You can get one with the automated one, but you have to have a pressure canner if you're considering doing that. Um, but of course, we weren't talking about growing meat and raising animals this week. But as any homesteader, that might be something you are doing. So also consider that as part of your harvest. I just want to touch base on that real quick. Um, so if you are raising animals for, for meat, um, you can also do smoking and salting. That's, that's another way of preserving. You can't really do that with fruits and vegetables. So I just want to make sure that you guys know that um, during harvest season, if you're including the food, the animals that you've raised for food, make sure that you're um, looking at all the ways that you can preserve them as well. Uh, and smoking and salting is one way. Canning is another way, an old school way, but it is, it is one way. So we're talking about our garden. There's so many things that we can do to save our garden for the season. It's, it's really exciting that we can grow so much food and put it away and save it that it can last months and months and months, um, sometimes throughout the whole season. Uh, sometimes I'm really lucky and I get things to last all season long. I have a few herbs and things left up here from last season. Um, I even have a few jars of things like uh, dried, these are dried uh, chili peppers. I use them for my chilies and just random things. So there's lots of different ways to preserve our harvest. And canning is the first one on my list. So I obviously want to talk, talk to you about canning. You can see I do lots of canning. And behind me, this is just a fraction. All of my vegetables, literally all of them, uh, about a month ago, maybe two uh, they were gone. I didn't make enough to last us all the way through to the summer, which is kind of a bummer. But we did eat fresh for months and months and months and um, from our canned goods. So what I have left here is just a few things I brought out. I have some pickled beets and some bread and butter pickles, different kinds of jams and jellies. I have some jarred blueberries, which I use for baking. They're just um, like in a simple syrup. Um, I do that with apples as well, and I have some applesauce there and relish as well. So there's so many different ways to use our food just in canning. Like, I'm not even talking with the other methods yet. 
So when you're canning, if you don't want to get a pressure cooker, a pressure canner, um, that's okay. You'll be a little bit limited on what you're going to be able to can, um, but you can still preserve that food in other ways. So for canning, um, you have your water bath traditionally, uh, which does jams, jellies, uh, pickles, relishes, uh, salsas, fruits and syrups, fruit sauces, tomatoes, and that's what you can do pretty much with just a large pot and your basic um, uh, canning starter kit. So you really don't even have to go buy the large canning pot. You just need a really good stock pot uh, that the, the equipment fits in. And of course you need some mason jars. <laughs> so for a water bath, you just wanna keep it simple um, and not get too crazy with the pressure canner. You still have a variety of things that you can uh, can up there, but you will not be able to can most of your vegetables, um, stocks and meats. You won't be able to do any of those, no soups or, or anything like that. Um, so if you do want to can vegetables, which I love canned, um, can do my canned carrots, um, beans. What else do I do? Uh, this year we're going to try and experiment with some potatoes, I think. And, uh, I would really like to try some peppers. So we're doing an abundance of peppers this year. Hopefully I get a lot and we'll see how that goes. Maybe we'll have fun experimenting together. Um, so with a pressure canner, most of the vegetables need to be um, pressure canned if you want to store them that way. But of course, if you don't want to can stuff and you um, just it's just not something that's interest you, you can freeze pretty much everything. Um, and there's really easy ways to keep things frozen for a long time without freezer burn. I mean, there's all kinds of bags made for the freezer, containers. You can buy a vacuum sealer if you don't already have one. Um, so freezing is a really good option. If you have a large freezer, of course, because hopefully you have a large harvest that you want to freeze, um, freezing is a good option. You can parboil some stuff, but it's recommended that you freeze, freeze things fresh, as fresh as you can, but don't pull them out of the garden when they're still warm and throw them in the freezer. Make sure you get them cooled down a bit, um, and then prepare them how you need to, if they need to be washed and then put them in the freezer. Um, and like I said, there's so many containers and bags and things you can do to prevent freezer burn. So, you, you know, it's, it's on you to take that action. Um, you can also do dry freezing, which of course isn't freezing, but it's a little bit different. I'm really not too familiar with it, but um, it is an option for certain things. Lots of berries and, and all kinds of uh, vegetables you can dry freeze. Um, so, you know, that's an option if you want to look into that. It's something to consider. And that's where I'm just going to get a sip here. Do you guys have any questions while I'm going on through the canning, freezing, anything? <sighs> okay. Well, that's okay. So next, um, dry freezing. Well, you can also dry a lot of your food out, especially if you have a dehydrator. Um, I myself don't have a dehydrator because I have a lovely wood stove and I try to dry stuff in the sun as much as I can. But things like herbs and medicinal plants, those are the things I would dry in the sun or near the stove. But you can dry out other things too. There's all kinds of fruits and berries that you can dry out. Obviously, you can make them, um, you know, fruit chips, banana chips, apple chips, um, all, the, all the little fruits that you like and berries can dry out. There's so many different things, even vegetables. I love chopping up carrots really thin. Um, I do cucumbers. I do them about, not cucumbers, celery, about this long, and I dry them out, and they, like, literally shrink down <laughs> to nothing. So I'll do a whole bunch of carrots and celery um, and sometimes even some dried onion, and I use that for, like, a soup mix, uh, you know, rehydrate it before I cook it. So you can literally dry out all kinds of things in your garden and just rehydrate them, or you can crush them up and use them for flavors and spices. Um, dried peppers is an amazing flavor additive. If you dry it out and crush it up, it is so good when you add, add to things, all kinds of things. And for you meat lovers out there, it's actually really amazing if you put it like in a meatloaf or even with some pork. Um, I used to eat meat, so, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's really good if, just for all kinds, I don't know, it gives it just a, an extra bam of flavor. Um, so 
drying your vegetables and using them for flavor for chips or for adding into soups and stews and stuff is a really good option um and it saves space as well because once once everything's dried it shrinks down to nothing and you can put them in jars bags containers and put them away um, as long as they stay sealed and dried that they should be good for a long long time so consider drying for sure um, a few things uh, you'll see near the end of the season and probably in the middle of the summer i will start to have everything in here i'll have herbs hanging i'll have chocolate mint and all the herbs that i grow they'll literally be hanging in windowsills and on the laundry line i was a laundry line above my wood stove um and then slowly once the wood stove starts near the end of the season i'll be doing apple chips on there and all kinds of little things that i put away like i said with the carrots and celery and onions for soup mixes so drying is a really good option. I love drying, um, I, especially when you can make fun stuff like the apple chips. That's really one of my favorite snacks. So um, get a dehydrator or a outdoor solar um, dryer. You can dry with air. You can dry with just the sun. You can dry with like a, a wood stove space, a dehydrator, an oven. So there's lots of options for drying food um, and lots of different uses, like I said. So think about that when you're you know, harvesting your, your stock, you can freeze, you can freeze some of your herbs too. keep that in mind. If you're not, if you're not wanting to dry everything out, you want to have some fresh stuff to grab here and there, you can freeze some of your herbs as well. So drying is a great option. Uh, for larger stuff, I myself don't have a cold storage anymore. I, we used to, uh, but this house doesn't have a, a basement and we haven't built in a cellar or anything. So we, myself, don't use a cold cellar. But I do use a few techniques outside that are kind of fun. Um, there's, if you dig a little bit of a hole and you put in a whole bunch of straw uh, and you put in a tote in there uh, and you keep it from getting too buried and you make sure there's no frost getting in there. Um, I keep my carrots and some potatoes in there and onions in there. Uh, the onions, I, they go pretty quick, so I'm not sure how long they last, uh, but definitely the carrots last in there for months until uh, the snow gets so deep that I, I can't really keep it there anymore. So if you don't have a cold storage, you can create these little cold storage um, in your yard and in your spaces. Uh, hopefully you're lucky enough to have a cold space in your home or outside. And in which case, if you do, you can store all kinds of the larger items, the hardier items, the root vegetables, the squashes, uh, the pumpkins, the butternut squashes, all those things. Uh, keep in mind that um, zucchini is a squash, but it's not going to last as long, um, especially the smaller ones. And of course, you don't really want those huge ones unless you're planning to, um, I don't know, bake them. They get they were really hard when they get big. They'll last a lot longer, <laughs> but, but they don't taste very good. So keep an eye on your squashes, uh, your zucchinis. Uh, they don't do very well in the cold storage unless you have that optimal temperature in there, which is really hard to attain. But like I said, all the squashes, pumpkins, uh, root vegetables, carrots, potatoes, all that stuff, um, hanging garlics and onions, these are all great items to put in cold storage or cold cellars or just a cold kind of dry area. Uh, so on apples, apples is something else you can store. And a neat little trick I, I learned years ago is if you wrap up the individual the apples individually in like a, a newspaper or brown paper and you stack them really gently you're actually going to get a couple extra months of of apples um so if you have some apple trees you can do i mean you can can them you can freeze them you can dry them <laughs> you can cold store them there's so many ways to preserve apples alone so think about that when you're if you have some wild apples and if you have wild apples, um, make some apple sauce. That's what I've made my apple sauce with. Wild apples that grow crab apples. They're a bigger one. So I have to add a little extra sweetener, but they're really good. Um, and I use it in all my baking. So sorry, I'm just gonna let him come in. <laughs> Sometimes action happens, life is real. <laughs> So, and the very, there's two actually, but the very last one as far as preserving is fermentating. Fermentation, um, you can do it for a few different items. 
and it's not for everybody and it's a really long and kind of smelly process but it is a way to preserve certain food and kind of create um, a new kind of food <laughs> so like sauerkraut kimchi um, I mean these things are fermented for a long time and they break down and they smell really gross but they actually create this amazing flavor, texture, and, and nutrient, beneficial nutrients for our, our, our gut biome, which is super important for our health. So fermenting, fermenting, fermenting <laughs> is another way to preserve and, and store um, certain foods. I'm not too familiar with all the different fermentation style, like what everything can be um, fermented, but I mean, we know the basics, cabbage, um, even things like fruits and stuff can be fermented down um, into, you know, drinkable things and other things, uh, vinegars and such as well. Um, so that's just, just one little method I want to make sure you guys know about because some people, um, you'd be surprised they have like sauerkraut under their cupboard for like a year and you didn't even know that they had a bucket of gross stinky stuff growing there. <laughs> some people's thing. So it is part of preserving and harvesting um, for some people. So, you know, look into it. It's kind of interesting. And the last thing, which is a little, a little different but not, um, is taking your harvest and cooking it, batch cooking it, making a whole bunch of meals out of a whole bunch of different items that you've grown in your garden and freezing them. Um, this is just one way that a lot of people don't think of, but it's really simple, especially if you have um, a community of people growing, if you're doing grow share programs. A grow share program is where a group of people each individually grow a few items on their property. So say, I'm going to grow a whole bunch of carrots, potatoes, and onions, uh, and you're going to grow all the beans and peas and corn, and she's going to grow all the zucchini, you know what I mean? Everybody grows, and then at the end of the season, you bring all your harvest together. Well, at the same time, while you're sharing and preserving, you could also be cooking um, and saving it that way as well. So there's lots, lots of ways to save and preserve our harvests, harvest our food, our produce, to keep it lasting for months. Um, even up to a couple seasons until we need it next season. And of course, this starts with, like I said, seed saving. So you're ready to, to produce again next year. So do we have any questions? Do you guys have any questions about preserving? Do you have any other methods that maybe I missed and, and didn't think of? Um, if so, please put it in the comments. Okay, well, I hope you guys will come back tomorrow with all your questions and comments. And even if you'd like to share um, what you've been doing or what you're planning to do to get started to grow food, um, I really invite you guys to do that. It'll be the same time tomorrow. It'll be our last day. Um, I am going to pop in on the weekend probably to show you guys what I'm planting and doing and maybe have some conversation. Um, so I hope you guys will join me for that as well. Um, but like I said, tomorrow we're going to go through everything we talked about um, throughout the week. I'm just going to kind of recap a little bit. And I really hope you guys uh, got that worksheet that I made up for you. So you guys can have a plan of action for yourselves in your garden and really start to think about um, getting some food production and food harvesting um, action in your home. Uh, so you can have some good health at home, save some money, uh, and just feel good about growing uh, something fantastic uh, that you can enjoy. So we're going to recap on everything uh, tomorrow. And like I said, make sure you guys bring your questions. And I'm also going to introduce you guys to what we can do um, beyond um, this workshop. Um, if you want to continue on with me, I have an eight-week course coming up. Um, it won't be free, but if any of you guys are interested in hearing more about that, I will talk just a hair about it tomorrow um, just to get you guys aware of what it, when it's starting, what it's going to be about. And it's pretty much going to be everything we talked about this week, um, taking into eight weeks as well as um, a few other homesteading and sustainable lifestyle um, activities and lessons. Um, so it'll be a full eight weeks with me, but We'll all touch base on that with, with you guys tomorrow for anyone who, who might be interested. 
But I hope you guys really um, got some information that is going to help you start this week. And I really, really hope you will share with us um, your garden adventures. Good, bad, positive, negative, your successes, your failures, things that you want to try, questions you have. That's what this group is for um, in regards to growing food as well as everything and anything sustainable um, living and healthy living and self-sufficiency. So Feel free to post anytime. Um, this is a group that I started because I wanted to build a community with you guys um, of being simple, self-sufficient, and, and just finding health at home. Um, especially while most of us are still home, we have time to, to learn these skills and have fun with our family doing things um, outside and inside. So um, I hope you will continue on with me. Those of you who only um, signed up for the group, for the, for the workshop, I hope you'll stay. And like I said, share with us and I will continue to share. Uh, probably have some more free little workshops coming up and my eight week one, uh, which will be separate from this group. So there's lots to come, lots to learn, lots to talk about, lots to share. And I know it's short again tonight, but I we can't be an hour every night, guys. <laughs> you have you have things to do. I know it. Um, so I really appreciate you uh, giving me your time. And if any one of you want to uh, book in a free one-on-one -on -one session just to talk about your garden or how you can be more self-sufficient in your lifestyle, um, I would be honored to have a conversation with you and help you set a plan of action for yourself. So make sure you reach out and let me know. Uh, we can also just chat through text, uh, through messenger, uh, through comments, whatever is more comfortable for you to reach out anytime guys okay so if you don't have any questions for today i hope you will tomorrow because i'm going to come back tomorrow same time and remember to think about how you're going to be preserving and harvesting when you harvest your food <laughs> are you going to be canning it freezing it drying it cold storing it are you going to be giving it to your neighbor to put in his basement <laughs> what are you going to be doing with your all the food that you're growing this season so think on that, get your plan of action going and get yourselves in the garden um, so you can have some health at home, sustainable, healthy living. So have a great evening, guys, and I hope to see you all tomorrow. And remember to reach out to me anytime and post, 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 share, share, share. Have a good one, guys, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.